let's talk about F-16s. F-16s are an American, uh, an American, um, uh, you know, fighter, fighter, uh, fighter jet. Um, they are a generation behind uh, the most advanced fighter jets in the world, which are the F-35s. Uh, but they are still a, a, a you know, a particularly modified F-16s, updated F-16s, are one of the best fighter planes in the world. And the reality is that, in spite of the fact that the Russians claim to have fifth generation fighters, uh, so the equivalent of F-35s, the Russians have no, they really don't. And we've seen that in Ukraine. The fact is that Russia still don't, doesn't have air superiority over a far, 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 far inferior uh, Ukrainian Air Force. Uh, uh, you know, maybe the Chinese have something that can come close to the F-35, but probably not. The, the F-35 just dominates the skies, but the F-16 is a close second. Um, and uh, and uh, the, uh, two NATO countries, uh, Denmark and the Netherlands, have just agreed uh, to uh, give uh, uh, Ukraine F-16s. Uh, this will allow Ukraine to establish, I think, air superiority. Will allow, uh, you know, F-16s are very good at evading uh, Russian air defense systems. Uh, this will allow uh, the Ukrainians to dominate the skies and therefore to dominate the front lines. So while these F-16s are not going to make any difference to the war anytime soon, because the soonest they, the Ukraine would get them is, is probably January, maybe late December, but probably January, they have the potential to completely change uh, this, the, the, the way this war is fought and, and, and change the balance of power to make it far more realistic for the Russians to throw out uh, to the Ukrainians to throw out the, the Russians uh, from Ukraine. Uh, the Su-35 is not a dominant airplane, uh, as we've seen, right? The fact is that in spite of the fact that the Russians have Su-35s, they do not have air superiority, whereas F-16s, I'll take an F-16, updated F-16 over an Su-35 any day, and I'll certainly take uh, an F-35E over any one of these planes uh, any day. Um, Denmark... And, uh, and Netherlands are gifting these planes to Ukraine. Notice here that uh, probably the F-22 is a, is a second. Yes, the F-22 is an amazing uh, plane, although it costs a gazillion, gazillion dollars. Um, notice that Denmark and Netherlands are gifting these planes to Ukraine. This is costing the United States zero. The reason the Biden administration uh, was in play here or, or, or had any say in this is because, because, in order for Denmark and Netherlands to, to gift or to sell their planes, they have to get U.S. approval. So uh, uh, the, the U.S. allows its, um, uh, you know, military, the, 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 its, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, military manufacturers to sell military equipment to other countries if approved by the U.S. government. And then those countries sign that they will not give or sell this equipment to any country without the approval of the United States. So uh, a lot of the talk about, oh, the United States is, um, is uh, spending a gazillion dollars on Ukraine. I've talked about before why that, those numbers are all false. But in addition to that, the reality is that the Biden administration has been holding up aid to Ukraine, holding up European aid to Ukraine. That is, these F-16s could have been delivered a year ago. The U.S. could have approved it a year ago. Uh, and and uh, it would have cost zero dollars. I wonder how many Republican candidates are willing to come out and say, look, we don't like the fact that the United States is spending money to supply the Ukrainians, but we are willing to give our, our, our European allies a complete 100% green light to give the Ukrainians whatever weapon systems they want in order to defeat the Russians. I mean, at least I'd have some respect for somebody like that who said it like that. But I, I, I don't see any Republican doing that because, God, I mean, they might share the same policy as the Biden administration. You can't do that. You'd be labeled a leftist or a leftist lover. Uh, so um, uh, these planes are going to be given to Ukraine. It is, uh, it is a major step. Uh, it, you know, will be a major step once they get them. Uh, imagine if the United States had said much earlier that they could have got the planes. Imagine if they'd said much earlier that they could have gotten uh, the, the tanks. Remember, even Abrams tanks need permission from the U.S. in order for Europeans to give it to the Ukrainians. They didn't get that permission for a long time, and the Ukrainians still do not have any Abrams tanks. They won't get them until the fall. 
um, which is coming up, but uh, fall. So uh, good for the Ukrainians. They'll have a world-class jet on their side. They'll be able to ground their MiG-29s or those awful MiG airplanes and, and put up a real, a real plane, a real plane. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, this is going to make a huge difference, as I said, because uh, the, the F-16s can evade Russian defense systems, as the Israelis have shown over and over and over again. Ukrainian, Ukraine, uh, in, in, in Ukraine is going to win this in, in a sense of expelling the Russians. Russia has already lost the war. Ukraine hasn't won it yet. I've explained why Russia's lost the war. It's lost it strategically. It's lost it in every dimension. It's lost it credibility-wide. It's lost it internally. Uh, and it's, it's lost it morale-wise. But it's certainly lost it strategic, strategically. Um, it will also lose it on the ground, ultimately. It's just a matter of time. Um, it, the only thing that can stop Russia from losing it on the ground is if the West stops supplying um, uh, Ukraine with aid or if, um, or if uh, the West forces Ukraine to cut some kind of compromise with Russia. But Russia has already lost, no matter what the rest of the outcome is, Russia's lost big time, which I've explained over and over again.